Today, we'll be talking about the full life cycle of our materials, not just about waste reduction and reducing the need for those materials in the first place, but all of their impacts along the way, when we buy them, when we use them, and when we ultimately dispose of them. Let's go learn more. So in thinking about the life cycle of stuff, we use a tool called life cycle analysis. It looks at all of the environmental impacts along the way of producing, using, and disposing of material. So let's take a common example of life cycle analysis using coffee packaging as an example. So we have three different types of packaging. The first, a steel coffee can. The next, a plastic coffee jug. And the third material, a metallic plasticky paper that works as a pouch for coffee. Most folks might think that the steel can is the best environmental choice because it's recyclable in most places. Some other folks might think that, well, the next best example would also be the plastic jug because in some recycling programs around the US, it's accepted. And folks then might also think that the third option, the one that's trash in most recycling programs across the US is the worst because we're having to throw it away. The actual answer is the third option, the plastic metal bag. This is because it takes the least amount of energy, resources, and water to make that item. Despite it being throwaway, it actually is the least impactful material that we might use to package coffee. Life cycle assessment in this way can sometimes upend our assumptions around materials and give us more information than we didn't know previously. So this process is obviously very complicated from our last example, and we buy a lot of things. Let's focus on what you can do to think critically as a consumer. Tip one, decide if you need to buy new. Some of the heaviest environmental impacts come from the production side of creating an item. If you can repair an item you have or buy one secondhand instead of new, you prevent those impacts while still getting what you need. Marion County regularly hosts repair fairs, which are free community events to connect people with broken items to people who can fix them. Tip two, start with one change. The problem can seem overwhelming, especially if we try to change everything all at once. Instead of trying to become an expert on every item out there and how it's made, pick one or two simple changes that you can make in your own life. Once these become comfortable, you can keep making small changes that will turn into big impacts over time. Tip three, don't sweat the small stuff. No one is perfect when it comes to waste reduction, not even me, and this is my job. If you can learn more about the materials you use and how to reduce them when possible, you're making a difference. Stay tuned for the rest of the video series to learn more about waste reduction and what happens to trash after it leaves your curb. If you want to learn more and get involved with your community, you can take our free Marion Resources Movement training and learn more about serving Marion County residents through waste reduction.